Hey, it's Greg Otten here, and this is an episode from the very first season of the Maritime Gardening Podcast. I've been doing this for a number of years now, and you can listen to the current season at my podcast website, uh, maritimegardening.com. It's completely free. Uh, but I thought I'd put the older episodes, uh, start putting the older episodes up on my YouTube channel for people that just prefer to consume online content in that way. So we'll give that a try, and if people seem to be enjoying it, I'll keep doing it. And if you really enjoy it, you can go to my website, maritimegardening.com, and listen to any one of the episodes I've ever done or the current season. So have a listen. This is the MaritimeGardening.com podcast, episode three. In today's episode, Greg and I are going to be talking about choosing a spot for your gardening and your design of that spot. Number two, your tools that you should be using or the tools that you need to get by, some essentials that Greg likes and Greg's going to talk about. Uh, number three, soil and amendments. Number four, mulch. And number five, seeds. All right, so thanks for tuning in to episode three of the Maritime Gardening Podcast. I'm back with Greg Otten. How are you doing today, Greg? I'm doing just great. Excellent. So today we're going to be covering basically information on getting started with gardening, you know, like the things that overwhelm people typically that might prevent them from actually getting into gardening and the costs that go along with that, maybe some tools. And uh, so that is that sum it up pretty well. Yeah, I mean, the notion is, uh, let's say you don't have a garden, but you have a piece of land somewhere, a backyard, or you know, maybe right. you're going to get a rent a plot at the local, uh, those community gardens, yes. you know, so I think those things are relatively cheap, 20 bucks, you want to choose one of those spaces, or you've got a yard, right. or, you know, your friend's yard, or whatever, yeah, yeah. Uh, or a piece <laughs> of, somewhere in the forest somewhere, uh, yeah. around land, uh, yeah. sure. <laughs> I didn't say that. Why not? <laughs> um you know, like let's say you don't have a garden, you you, you, think, you think this might be the year that you're going to yeah. give it a try. How do you get started? You know, what do I need? And uh, you know, it's it's the middle of May, so it's it's time to get going on that. Yeah. Okay. I know you you tend to operate pretty lean when it comes to equipment and uh, you know and and resources, which is which is great because that's going to be more appealing to people who are just getting into this or maybe getting back into it. So, all right, so kick things off. All right, number one is you got to choose a spot. Let's say I'm just going to speak to having a yard, okay? So right. and, uh, apologies to anyone who doesn't have a yard. Yeah, yeah, I have apply a very this, small Apply one. this logic to wherever, you know, whatever site uh, you might have at your disposal. Right. Um, you got a yard, and I see this all the time. People tend to put the garden where you know, the most useless corner of the yard that they don't want, right? Or right. they tuck it away somewhere, it's not, you know, and um, really you should put the garden in the place that most favors growing vegetables. Okay. Uh, you're not trying to grow uh, moss, you're not trying <laughs> to grow, uh, you know, weeds, you're yeah. trying to grow like lush, beautiful vegetables and to do that, you need sun. You need yeah. lots of sun. You need all the sun you can get. Yeah. So you need to find the sunniest spot on your in your yard. Um, I mean, a lot of people are going to be constrained because they don't want to have a garden in their front yard. Yeah, um, it would be right down by the road in my case. That's right. So, I mean, yeah. you need to move. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay. I mean, it's not uncommon. If, if you go to various – I mean, I remember when I was living in Ontario, uh, you'd go to certain – uh, little uh, streets in Toronto, and you'd see Italians with like their whole front lawn. The whole thing would be garden tomato. Yeah, why not? Everywhere. I mean, they'd, they'd use the space, right? Yeah. Anyway, so you got to figure out where south is, mm -hmm. and you you know, I mean, the best way to do it, I mean, other than just having a compass, is is get out. And even then, even if you know where south is, you might not have the sunniest spot because of trees and other things like that. So, right. You know, what I would do is go outside, you know, at the sunrise. 
and see where the sun's shining. Mm-hmm. Go outside at like ten o'clock. See where the sun's. You know, put 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 a rock on the ground or put make a mark. See where what part of the ground the sun is on at ten. See what part of the ground the sun's on at twelve. Probably everywhere. And you know, every every couple hours, just put a different marker and where the sun is, and you're you're gonna find you know that spot. There's there's an ideal spot. And the other thing is. You know, is it really windy or is there a shelter? I know where I, where I live, we get a wind coming right off the ocean. And I moved my garden a number of years ago and it made a huge difference because I put it in the lee of the house. And okay. there's, you know, sort of trees and forests. So anything that loves heat doesn't want too much wind because wind's going to lower the soil temperature. Right? It's just going to blow the heat right off the soil. It's like, a, like any wind chill, right? Mm-hmm. If it's 20 degrees in the air and the sun is full sun and there's no wind... If you're standing in that sun, it doesn't feel like it's 20. It feels like it's... If there's no wind, it feels like it's 30. Yeah, right. Um, I don't know what you'd call that. It's like the opposite of wind chill. Yeah. Sun heat. That's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, you can sort of create... You know, you want to find that ideal micro microclimate that doesn't have too much wind, that, that's nice and sunny, so your soil is going to get nice and warm, and your plants are going to get all the light they need, because plants are photosynthetic. They need light to grow. Right. You know? Right. So that's number one. Okay. Number two is, um, you know, how do you want your garden to look? Do you want, you know, a, a box, a, you know, a wooden bed, a raised bed? A, you know, personally, there's a, you know, we're going to have an episode on this, I believe. Right. About raised beds. Yes. I think the episode is raised beds, are they all that in a bag of chips or something? Right. Or something, the title right. Like that. Sounds good. They're all the rage right now, but I... Uh, from what I have seen, they're more work. They create work for you because you're planting high, and right. the, you know the water is on the ground. Yeah. So, you no, know, I would say six inches high is as high as you want to go. You know, right. any higher than that, you're making work for yourself. Any higher than that, and you're going to have to do the watering. Right. Uh, who wants to do that? Yeah. No. Um, I Not was getting us. eaten alive by mosquitoes this morning, uh, watering some of my um, the seedlings. When you got little seedlings, you got to water them because the roots aren't that deep. Right. But uh, you know, you don't want to be out there getting eaten alive by black flies and mosquitoes watering your garden. No. Uh, so, and the other thing is money. You know, you're going to spend a lot of money on some sort of wood. It's all going to rot. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's going to rot. So I've got gardens. I've got different styles. I've got some that are bordered by. I like to border things. I just you don't need to. The plants don't care. You can right. just make a mound and go. Um, uh, I I have everything bordered because I'm just I just like the way it looks. Yeah, it's, it uh, looks nice. It's organized. Uh, I've got some that are rough cut. You know, heavy timbers. I've got some that are granite rocks because I got a lot of rocks. Uh, mm-hmm. Just you know, they, they look kind of cool. And the rocks gather heat. I got some that are just dead trees. Yeah, uh, that I just pegged into the ground, sort of thing with with wooden pegs. Like, well, so come to think of it, I don't remember my grandfather's gardens having any sort of raised bed part to it, or even uh, or even borders for that matter. It must be more of a cosmetic thing, is it? Yeah, I think it's become the the way people do things now because yeah. it, it seems like today everything we do, we have to figure out a way to spend a fortune in doing it. Yeah, complicate um, it. You don't need any of that at all. And actually, I have I was incorrect. I, I have beds in my garden that don't have any sort of border whatsoever. They're just right. Um, you know, you can just you can just tell they're slightly higher than than the grade. Okay, you know, gotcha. A couple, a couple inches, basically. All right. and like I grew potatoes in one of those last year, and they grew great. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just figure out a design. You know, and that's another thing. You know, if you're making a bed, you can't make it. In my opinion, if you're going to make some sort of bed. It should be. You don't want to be walking on your soil, so right. make a bed that you can reach across. If you can get at it from both sides, then it should be four feet wide because you mm-hmm. can reach about two feet comfortably. Most people, yeah. I can, I can reach a bit longer. I'm, I'm really tall, but um, even even then, I, you know, two is more. I'm less likely to pull a muscle on my back. Right. Um, so two feet wide and. 10 or 12 feet long seems to be a maximum for me because any wider than that, it's kind of a pain to go walk around, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you're planting, you know, if you're trying to organize, I'm going to plant this here and that there, well, you know, a, a 4 by 10 or 4 by 12 bed of anything is a hell of a lot of that. Yeah. You know, a 4 by 10 bed of carrots is a lot of carrots. That's uh, true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like yeah. a year's worth of, that's a lot of carrots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, think about those dimensions. If if it, if the bed's going up against a fence or a wall or something like that, then you're only going to want it two feet from 
you know, two feet deep. Right. Um, because you can only reach, or maybe two and a half feet at most, because you can only reach so far, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't want to be walking on your soil because that'll push it down and compact it. And, you know, you really never want to be walking on the soil that your plants are growing on. Mm. Always stay off of that. Right. All right. So that's choosing a spot and a design. And the next thing is tools. Yeah. Because you need, you need tools. Now, I'm going to say that you only need five tools, but I'm not counting a wheelbarrow. Right. Because that's, that's conveyance. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> you got to right. there. Because yeah. five is just a better number than six. Sure. So you got to have a wheelbarrow. You can get by with it, or you can use a bucket or something like that. Yeah. A lot more work, though. My whole garden in the backyard, I could maintain that with one tool and a bucket if I had to, if it was the end yeah. of the world, and that's all I had. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't like 70 years old. Or, <laughs> um, there's a reason people had a lot of kids in the old days. That's need, true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I hope to be able to do that when I'm 70. Hopefully yeah. I'll be spry. But uh, <laughs> anyway, five tools. So number one tool, my number one, and, and, and I'm basing this on what I use. Right. Okay? I've got a large garden. I've been gardening for years. And what do I use 99.999% of the time? And the number one go-to tool, and we'll put a picture of this thing in the show notes. Uh, it's called the Ho Me Digger. It's a Korean tool. It's been used for over 5,000 years. It's uh, just a great tool. I use it all the time. It's my number one go-to tool. And it's just one solid piece of, of steel connected to a little handle. It's shaped like, a, I guess, a plow. And uh, I think you'll find nothing cuts through, digs up, separates soil with that kind of ease. Um, it's a great tool. I bought it at Lee Valley. We're not getting any money from Lee Valley, yeah. but anyway, I bought it from Lee Valley. And uh, but it's uh, it really it's a it's a hand tool, something you can hold in your hand. Yeah. And it's shaped like a plow, like the kind of plow you pull behind a horse in olden times. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It looks pretty cool. And uh, you can do almost everything with that tool. I could manage my entire garden with that tool. Hmm. You can sort of, I mean, it's inefficient for a lot of things, but what it does really well is it uh, digs holes. Uh, you can get at a rock and you can get under things. It's really good for weeding because it doesn't cut the weed. It just sort of pulls away the soil around. It just It's designed. It's sort of. Right. And the other thing is you don't. You're not hacking. You're not. You're not swinging and like an axe sort of thing. You mm-hmm. just pull, and it pulls itself into the ground on its own. It's a very nice um, sort of uh, economical design. Very simple, and it lasts a million years. I've got two of them. Yeah. One of them, the handle wore out, and I just drove it into a piece of wood. Yeah. Uh, 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 to replace the handle. And, Sounds like Greg. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, that's number one tool. They're not cheap. I mean, I have never been able to find them for less than like. I don't know what they cost, like 25 bucks. They're quite expensive for what they are. Anyway, so shovel. Gotcha. Have a shovel. And you know, there's lots of different kinds of shovels. Uh, I'd get something with the longest handle you can get. You know, you don't want to be bending over and breaking your back. Right. I don't know why they make shovels with these little three foot handles. Who on earth, you mm. know, would want to use that when you could have, you know, if you have a long handle, well, if, if you want to tighten up your grip and be short, you know, like you can do, you can, you have the options, right? Um, a very short person. Well, yeah, but a really short person can use a long shovel, no problem. That's true. They can just hold it lower. Yeah. So you got the options. And right. if they wanted to be able to reach with it, they yeah. could. That's when you put your kids to work. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, anyway, there's, there's shovels called gardening shovels, which have a square end. Don't get that one. That's for, like, flower gardening, and it's for, like, edging and cutting you know if you've got a big host and you want to cut it in half and it's it's for right it's really not for a you know you want a round nose shovel this is the classic sort of spade shape yeah, right um because that will go into the ground uh easier than anything else if you got to dig a hole <laughs> if you're yeah. trying to work some soil and you're trying to get in there or you're trying to punch through sod or right or whatever that's the tool to use um, and you know get a file and and sharpen the the end of your shovel make it sharp because mm-hmm. it'll work a lot better. I mean, my father, I don't remember my father doing that, but I, I saw some guy doing it once, and I thought, what a great idea. You just put an edge on that thing, and it'll just glide through. That is a good idea. Yeah, and, and I guess in, the, in a tight spot, you could use it as a weapon. I <laughs> exactly, yeah. Hey, well, you know, the, when those deer are coming out of the woods, uh, eyeing your tomatoes or whatever. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. You can just go to work on them. <laughs> Um, nothing, nothing, uh, uh, no, that's just another topic. <laughs> okay. We'll go there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> moving on. So the shovel, 
now uh, that's number two. Um, now the other, those are two really important things. So some sort of digging tool, a shovel, because you you know you got to make, you got to dig, you got to deal with material, different materials, whatever it's manure or yeah. you know, whatever you're dealing with. I would say the next three important in no particular order. You can get by without them, but because uh, you can use your hands or your shovel or your homie digger, but they do the job much better. So a rake, not a leaf rake, but you know the sort of right. square, sort of shape like rake, because yeah. um, you need that for like smoothing out surfaces, sure. and it can also be handy for various forms of weeding. Sure. Uh, a, a pitch fork is really handy for dealing with mulch and compost and stuff like that. A lot of times you're your shovel won't go into those things because it's got, you know, it's got all this fibrous material and the shovel just won't go in. Right. Or as a pitchfork. And when I say a pitchfork, I mean the kind with the sort of skinny long tines. Some okay. pitchforks have these big, fat, forky looking things. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's the kind that I have. Yeah, they don't dig in very well. You want these no. big, long, the kind you'd use for hay. It, it's like yeah. long tines. Those okay. will go into, those are, you, you can tell if you're, if you're shoveling, manure or hay or mulch uh, that's the one tool that will not wear your back out because you, you don't have to like huh, you know sort of yeah yeah drive it in there it just goes in no problem okay uh, and get one again i've got one with a short handle and i hate it i have one with a long handle i lost it get one with the longest handle you can find okay. uh, just make that job easier nice um a uh, pitchfork a rake and a pickaxe okay if you're trying to you know get a garden going and you're using your existing saw, which I recommend because um, it's free, um, you're going to have to get in there and break it up and, you know, get sort of started. Right. Um, so a, a pickaxe is the tool for that, you know, okay. through anything. Yeah. <laughs> pickaxe will just destroy everything in it. And yeah. you can use it for prying out rocks. Yeah, it's yeah. Prior, you know, it's just a handy thing. Um, so those are the five guarding tools, notwithstanding the wheelbarrow. Right. Two other tools you need, but they're not guarding tools, they're just general purpose tools, and that would be a knife mm -hmm. um, and an axe. Um, I, I find, because an axe is also a mallet, because sometimes you need pegs and, right. you need stakes and, you, you know, stakes and pegs um, and um, tying things up, trellises, strings, and you're always dealing with string, stakes, and pegs in a okay. garden. Okay. You've got things you need to suspend or put up, and you need a knife to cut the, to cut the uh, the rope or whatever, or to whittle. You know, if you're not going to buy pegs, if you're not going to buy stakes, which I don't, I just use. You know, if a neighbor throws away some long sticks, there I got them. You know? Yeah. Or yeah. if there's a tree that looks like it's got the right shape, well, it's, it's, I'm going to take it. Yeah. Uh, I'll just fashion it in the shape I want. Sure. You can use your action really for that. They're really handy like that. You can save a lot of money in sure. uh, using those things. Yeah. So that's the minimum. If you wanted to start off with just like one bed and you wanted to keep it simple and keep costs low and you wanted to have one tool, the, the homie, di homie digger and a, and a bucket, you could totally do it with just those two tools. The minimalist gardener. Yes, the yeah. minimalist gardener. Well, if you're, if you're trying it out, maybe. Sure. You know, you want to be able to, you know, don't don't go all the way in, all, all in sort of thing. You know? Right. Maybe you right. want to change your mind. You yeah, even twenty five or thirty bucks. I don't think that's that's too bad for, for a tool that you uh, consider so essential. So. Oh, and it's robust. Yeah. It lasts you as long as as yeah. long as you have an arm. I mean, my the way I approach gardening is always. I mean, it's an art form, but it's also, you know, you should try to, you know, get back what you put in. You know, so right. don't go overboard just buying all kinds of stuff. Try to try to have a garden that gives you as much, at least in year one, as much food value as as what you spent putting it together. Mm -hmm. And every year after that's going to be gravy. Yeah. Um. Not to talk like a business guy, you need a net gain, and you're but really that's that's the is sort of my ultimate goal every year is to get more out than I put, you know, more back than I put right. in. Well, makes sense. Yeah. All right. So that's tools. Now the next thing is uh, the soil, right? Okay, I've got a, I've got my tools. I've got some sort of box or just an area. Now, you know, is my soil good enough? Do I need to buy some soil? Should I buy thirty bags of stuff from the hardware store? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do I do? Well, I mean, you can you can do that. You can right. buy 30, 30 bags of topsoil from the, the garden center if you want. Mm -hmm. um, I would stay away from everybody buys peat moss. I don't really know why I don't buy it. It's uh, 
uh, peat moss is acidic, uh, and you no, know, you don't want an acidic soil. So, okay. Um, aside from the fact that they had to destroy a bog to harvest it, <laughs> but, but anyway, um, yeah. Uh, it really, uh, in my experience, it's not the be all and end all of gardening. Um, and besides the fact, if you buy it, you you can't you can't plant it, and it has to be worked into your soil, so you have to till. Right. Um, and my approach to gardening is no-till gardening, so I'm, mm-hmm. not, I'm not tilling that, and I'm certainly not going to turn it over with a pitchfork and right. you know, break my back. Right. Um, and you got to pay for it. Right. So, you know, use start with the soil you have. Um, what, do, what, what do you have there? You know, if you've got grass, um, one trick is to just cut the sod out and turn the sod over. Mm. And, um, the grass can't grow backwards back up <laughs> there. Uh, <laughs> so you just kill it basically yeah, yeah. you're turning that sod into soil again yeah um so you've turned your let's say you, you, let's let's just pretend you made a little box you got some two by six and you made you made a, a four by ten box and because you want a box yeah and uh so you you can turn the sod over and another trick thing you could do instead of turning the sod over is just put newspaper down about three or four layers of newspaper over the grass and then put some sort of soil in there you could get you know, uh, uh, if you have a vehicle or pay for delivery, a, a cubic yard of uh, of soil, um, you can usually get that for, um, well, actually, that size garden, probably half a cubic yard. Some places will sell it to you for $20. Okay. Um, of You know, you don't want to buy what they call topsoil. You want to buy gardening soil. Topsoil has got a lot of clay and a lot of sand in it. And it's really not. Oh. Um, what they call topsoil is not what... Um, you know, a uh, a horticulturalist might call topsoil. Why would they put sand and clay in it? Uh, well, because topsoil is what you use to grow grass in. Okay. And so no one really cares. You know, it's got to be tough enough for you to... It's supposed to be, you know, something you can stand on. Right. It's going to sort of hold up to being okay. stuck on. And not only that, I mean, no one expects grass to grow in healthy soil. Right. Grass is grown in soil that's just treated with every goddamn thing in the world. Yeah. Um, you know, you got to put this, you know, this fertilizer on at this time of year and that fertilizer on at that time of year, and you got to lime yeah. it. Yeah. Do this. yeah. So it's not a really a self sustaining system anyway. It's just a, so, you know, people don't really care so much about that. And grass is, you know, you, you just, you have a different goal for the thing you're growing when you're growing grass. Okay. Uh, so, you know, so that's one option. And it's relatively inexpensive, and you're off off to the races. Another option, in which which I've done, and it's actually better soil, although it's a bit more work, is uh, you just find a horse stable somewhere and just get, you know, reasonably aged horse manure. You know, one thing you can do is even if the horse manure isn't aged, you you know, you build your beds in the, the fall for the yeah. following year, and it's going to be aged by spring anyway. You That's just throw true. it in there. But yeah. uh, a lot of them will have like a different piles <laughs> right yeah. and then they usually don't sell it they, they want to get nobody wants it because uh, unlike the other manures like cow manure um, uh, a horse uh, when it eats a, a weed or yes do tell me about the different manures <laughs> you have to understand this <laughs> yeah uh, weed seeds will survive a horse huh okay they go right through and most weed seeds they're not broken down or, or ruined they, they, they may even be improved by going through a horse. Man, those weeds. A cow or a chicken uh, or a sh- uh, sheep, I believe, um, you know, a seed goes through them. It, it's not a seed anymore when it comes out. Hmm. It's done. The heat <laughs> or whatever, I don't know what they do in there, but it's different than a, a horse. Must It must just go right through real quick. Yeah, yeah. They don't, not, not a lot happens. <laughs> um, it comes out. And you can tell, like... You know, I've got like, you know, various gardens, you'll have these sort of balls of, you know, well, you know what it is. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it just looks like a ball of grass. Grass, yeah. Uh, or a ball of seeds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you'll see like a ball of, it'll just start growing. Um, yeah, it makes you wonder and, how they get enough nutrition out of it. Well, they get something out of but, it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway, that's a free, nothing, I mean, horse manure is just a great soil. Mm-hmm. As long as it's brown. Dark, the darker brown it is, um, you know, if it's ideally it's not in balls and it's dark. Okay. That's ideally. That's something can be hard to find. So yeah. if it's still in shaped in those sort of pucks or balls, but it's dark, dark brown, that's aged enough. Yeah. Uh, if it's green, um, 
not only is it not aged enough, but it smells so bad you don't want to be around <laughs> it. Uh, so stay away from that. Yeah. But I'm, I'm only talking about this because that's oh, yeah. the cheapest, you know, sort of medium you can find is horse manure, and it's almost always free. Yeah. Um, and it's extremely good. Okay. Like you could just get a bucket of horse manure, like a storage container. Yeah. Dump it on the ground, put two zucchini seeds in it, and you'll have huge zucchini, and they're going to grow great. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's it's a great. You know, I've planted strawberries straight in it, and, um, and they grow great. Everything seems to grow great in it. Huh. Um, so that's. But it's got a lot of weeds, yeah. right? So a solution to that is. Well, when you put all that manure down, you put paper over the manure, okay. about three or three or four layers of newspaper. Yeah. And then when you're planting, it's ideal for transplanting because you just poke a little hole where the transplant goes in. Okay. Um, so maybe a, the odd weed it might poke up through that hole, but the rest of it, the weeds are going to hit that paper, and they just can't get through because of the weave of the paper. And then they die. They'll just die, and then the paper yeah. will break down fairly quickly. Okay. Uh, in about a month, that newspaper will just disappear, and it'll become uh, uh, fertilizer. Okay. <laughs> so, anyway, um, that's soil. And, of course, amendments, you know, like if you're using the soil you have, you probably want to put some sort of manure on it or um, something. You know, yeah. you, don't, you don't know what kind of soil you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're not adding soil and you're using the soil you have, you're going to probably want to – if the soil you have is full of worms – Full of worms, then it's probably pretty good soil. Mm. Worms make worm comp, worm uh, worm manure. Worm manure is the best manure there is. Okay. Um, if there's not a lot of worms, then maybe you've got issues. But you don't have time to send your soil to <laughs> your cultural college to get it, uh, you know, tested. No. So I mean, there's things you can do. There, there's things that will grow in the poorest soil, like beans and peas. They will grow in the worst soil. They're, mm. you know, so if you you just want to try something this year and you don't know what kind of soil you've got, just put some beans and peas in there. Test and, it out. Uh, yeah, and the, the beauty of beans and peas is they, they both fix nitrogen in the soil, so they'll improve your soil anyway. Okay. Um, they don't really don't take much away. They sort of add to the soil. Yeah. Um, another way to test your soil is to plant potatoes in it because if it's great soil, you should get 10 potatoes per plant. So you can use that as a gauge. If you get like one potato per plant, there's something, something wrong with not your, right. Something's not right with that soil. <laughs> and it's the original potato that you put in the ground. Yeah, well, that would be uh, <laughs> usually the original potato is pretty nasty. But, uh, <laughs> two months in the ground, but yeah, but uh, yeah, and I've I've done that. I you know usually when I make a new garden bed, I just use the soil that's there and um, I'll put a bit of mulch over top of it and just see you know just curiosity. Right. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes I have great results, and uh, most often it's lousy because the soil on my property is terrible. Mm. Um, so then it's time to get the horse manure going. <laughs> yeah, get the so, horse manure. So you just hit a local stable, and uh, they're okay with uh, you just knocking the door. Hey, I'm just here to get a bucket of manure. Yeah, you, or you just go look on Kijiji. You, you just type manure or manure free, and there'll always be some. Or like the manure is in. The manure is free, but you got to pay them twenty bucks to like dump a bunch yeah. in your because they're, they're like some of these places. If you want a lot, like you want a pickup truck full, yeah. um, you give them like fifteen twenty dollars, and they'll use their tractor yeah. to dump it in. You know, it's their time and their gas and all that sort of stuff. So, but for twenty dollars for like a truckload of prime growing medium, what you buy, what, what is called gardening soil. If you compared the two, you took got a scientist in a in a lab and compared the two. That horse manure has got more of everything. Yeah, uh, it's just a whole nother game. And especially after that manure has been in your garden for a year or two, it's just like black, beautiful, incredible stuff. Hmm. Um, and the worms, of course, they get in there and they make everything better. Nice. Uh, that's enough. I think we yeah on soil and amendments. Um, another thing you need is mulch. Um, once your plants are, I mean, this, this whole permaculture approach to gardening and mulches are key. You know, once you've got plants and they're growing, you're going to want to put something over that soil so that the soil isn't exposed to the sun and the air. The soil mm. will always stay wet and moist, which is what the plants want. So the plants get constant moisture at just the level they want. So whenever they need water, they got the amount of water they, they want. Okay. You don't want them, like a child, you wouldn't want a baby 
going through periods of starvation or dehydration. No, want that no. baby to get milk whenever it wants milk, yeah. whenever it needs milk. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing. You want the plant to get water whenever it wants water, you know, because whenever it wants water, that's when it needs water. Right. Uh, so mulch will, for, to a large extent, ensure that by keeping your soil from drying out. Hmm. It'll also keep your soil from getting compacted. Um, so it'll be still stay nice and soft. A bit of a cushion, the, yeah. That's right, and that allows the roots to get in there. And it also just allows all the living things in the soil to sort of do their thing. And, yeah. it, you know, they're going to work for you. So you're just, you're just helping nice. everything out. You're helping the things that are helping you. Yeah. So, you know, various sources of mulch uh, available. You can, um, you know, if you go to a, uh, you know, a sort of landscaping supplies place, I would advise against buying the sort of colored wood chips that uh, they sell. They don't really have much in them. Um, they, they are a mulch, but they don't have, you want a mulch that's going to feed your soil as well. Yeah. So, uh, uh, some places will have what's called t tub ground mul mulch and that'll have like leaves and bark and, and, uh, you know, sticks and all kinds of things in it. So that's great stuff because mm -hmm. it's going to break down and actually feed. It's going to have almost like an effect, like every time it rains, there's going to be compost tea coming through it into your soil. So yeah. a tub ground mulch is great if you want to spend. If you want to spend money, um, tub ground mulch is probably the best mulch to buy. Okay, good uh, to know. You don't want to, you don't want to spend money, um, go back to your horse manure, there's usually hay everywhere. Um, right. Usually they throw away the old bedding hay and stuff like that. So you can use that old hay. That's got weeds in it too. <laughs> so yeah. you, know, it's, it's, you know, you want to save money, you probably got to you know, work a little harder. But I, right. I, do, all, I do that all the time. You know, yeah. it's not a big deal. And usually the... You know, if you put anything in your garden that's weedy, the weeds grow once, and right. then you pull them. And because you've got a mulch, you're not going to get new weeds because the mulch is going to sort of keep mulches keep weeds under control. Okay. Um, so you know, old hay, any sort of hay, uh, leaves. You know, you run them with your lawnmower, uh, grass clippings. Um, if there's anyone in your neighborhood getting uh, their trees serviced by some sort of uh, arborist, they often uh, chip their chip trees up. up so. Yeah. That's the stuff you want. If they're like firing branches with leaves and bark and everything into that wood chipper, well, you know, that's, that's not just wood chips. That's all that green material from right. the as well. Right. So that's going to, over time, uh, break down and, and feed your soil mm. as well. Um, and often they'll just let you take that. they got to take that stuff somewhere. Yeah, it costs they, money to get rid of it now. They have to pay to get rid of it. Um, so if you come across those guys, uh, sweet talk them into giving you some wood chips. Sure. Uh, so that's mulch. Um, and finally, uh, seeds. Right? you gotta, yeah. you got to plant something. And, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, uh, you're going to go to the garden center and there's going to be a million seeds. Yeah. And, I mean, you got to bear in mind that you've got a small garden. If you, you know, if you're just starting out, you're not going to make a huge garden. You're going to make a bed or two and see how it goes. And, you know, if you're anything like me, you'll just keep adding beds every year, but, um, you're going to start small. There's only so much you can put in a, a four by 10 space. So, I mean, get two or three things, but buy the things that you like to eat. You know, a really easy thing to plant is, is strawberries. Uh, I can't think of a better bang for your buck. You stick those in the ground. They're going to keep coming back year after year. Um, you don't have to do anything. You plant strawberries, you plant them, you put some mulch down, you walk away and just let them do their thing. Yeah. And, if, you know, if you get the ever-bearing kind, like uh, Seascape is a nice variety, it, it's, it's going to give you strawberries all summer long and then a huge crop in the fall. So is it, you know, if someone misses planting these things in the month of May, is it too late to do it later or you just do it when you can? You probably won't be able to find them to buy. Okay. You know, the garden centers sell them and then once they're out, they're out. Mm. Because usually they're bare roots, so I mean they they've got a they need to get in the ground. Right. A couple of places I go, they started selling strawberries a, a week or two ago. Okay. So you could have put them in the ground a couple, you know, a week or two ago. Yeah. Um, but they're around. They're around right now. Strawberries. Um, they're pretty cheap. Ten bucks, and you'll get like a lot of strawberries. You know, ten dollars will will fill a four by ten gardening space. No mm. problemo. Mm. Um, and they'll procreate, and, and there'll be more strawberries. You know, strawberries just pr propagate themselves. One plant in a season will become four plants if you let it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> or something like that. It yeah. at least become two or three plants. Yeah. Um, but usually it's more than that. They become four or five, you know. The, 
they just go. So um, there's a whole science to that. But and plant what you like to eat. If you like kale, plant kale. Um, if you're really inexperienced and you want to have success, um, plant stuff that's easy like beans and peas. You know, plant some uh, potatoes can be easy. Um, you know, plant stuff that's you're going to have uh, success with. Right. You know, you don't want your garden to be a dismal failure. No. Um, no. And beans and peas, I mean, beans, if you look at in the grocery store, they're not cheap. No. Green beans? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, uh, and the same with, like, fresh peas. And I would recommend snap peas, not the, what's it called? Uh, don't buy snow peas. Okay. Um, they don't seem to, uh, uh, they get woody quicker. They, okay. Uh, the snap peas, those are the fat ones. Okay. Um, they just taste better. They're more watery. They're yeah. just nicer to eat. They seem to... You know, you don't have to pick them. Uh, if you're growing snow peas, you, you got to pick them like every day. Like you can't miss a day. Right. It seems to like there's a day, one day too many, and they're no good anymore. Gotcha. Um, and they're not as bad as I'm making out. They're just snap peas are so much better than, than yeah. uh, snow peas. So make sure. And my my recommendation is you get snap peas. Okay. And there's lots of different varieties. So, you know, maybe I can do a show on that too yeah but for sure like like beans there's a there's a variety called provider that's um very very reliable it's a bush bean and uh it's a really reliable bean it's you, you can't go wrong okay uh, not only that but you can save your seeds so you buy one pack of seeds of provider you never have to buy seeds gotcha. again gotcha. Uh, if you don't want to cool yeah very good so that kind of summarizes the key points that you wanted to cover in this episode yeah, I think so. Awesome. Uh, anything else uh, you could think of that I didn't? Uh, no, uh, I don't think. I don't think at all. Are you ready to make a garden in your backyard? Do I, you? you know what? Every time I talk to you, I I feel like I want to do that. <laughs> and uh, you never know. I might I might just do that. I've got some drainage issues on the property here that uh, I think flow through the the areas that that get the most sun. So I'm not sure what to do there. But I'll have to have you down. Yes. I'll have to have you down so you can laugh at my yard and say, <laughs> well, you know, maybe you should stick to growing things on your deck. And, but anyway, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, I'll definitely have to get you down. But uh, awesome. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a very informative episode. Um, so, so we've decided that in this episode we want to have a little contest. So we're going to draw one lucky winner who's going to win one of these homey gardening tools from Lee Valley. Uh, all you need to do is make sure you're subscribed to the Maritime Gardening email list. That's our newsletter where we let people know by email when the next episode's coming uh, and whatnot, any news and updates. Also, if you want to increase your chance of winning, we're going to draw from the people who share this episode on Facebook or social media. So if you're already on the email list, you already have a chance to win. If you're not on the email list, by all means, go to MaritimeGardening.com and subscribe to the email list. And if you want to increase your chances even more of winning this great gardening tool that we featured on the episode today, go to our Maritime Gardening Facebook fan page and uh, you can share our episode graphic and update there and that will increase your chances. Just, uh, just let us know that you've done so and uh, you'll have multiple chances to win. So hope you're a lucky winner, and um, that's our first contest of the show. You can check out the show notes, find out all about the tools that Greg talked about and, uh, and everything else, all the other key points. Just go to maritimegardening.com slash 003, or just go to Maritime Gardening, and you'll find the latest episode right there. I also want to mention that you can... Absolutely listen to these episodes on iTunes if you uh, have an Apple uh, device. You can also find us on Stitcher, just Stitcher, just the way it sounds, .com. And uh, you can also just play the episode directly on the website. So thanks again for listening. Thanks, Greg. And, Thank you. And uh, we will hopefully have you join us on the next episode, everybody. Talk soon. Bye. Bye-bye.